It's always a good day for some real talk. My name is Yinka Oladevan and today we are at Sweet Kiwi at Lucky Phase One. I've got a great topic for you guys, so let's get started. So the one thing that we all have in common right now is that we live in this beautiful, beautiful city called Lagos. <laughs> and although it has its ups and downs, I felt like it's, there's no other place quite like it, yeah. right? So today I wanted to talk about living wow. Lagos. Oh, okay. um, I saw on the internet the other day, somebody was saying that you should be able to put um, surviving Lagos or living in Lagos on your CV <laughs> as like a skill. Amen. You know? True. True. Do you guys agree? Yeah. 100%. Living in Lagos. Okay, so, um, and then sometimes it kind of feels like it's like survival of the fittest because yeah. there really isn't a system yeah. here. What has yeah. your experience been like, especially you, you know, Lambo, you're female DJ. Mm -hmm and you're trying to do it, you know, and you are doing it. You're doing yeah. your thing in a male-dominated world. How has it been like living in Lagos? Um, well, living in Lagos or challenges I face being a female <laughs> <laughs> in Lagos <laughs> because it's a whole lot, you know. But I think, first of all, like most of the challenges I face, I think is a, it's more of an African thing, you know, how like uh, women are a bit... Uh, I don't know how to sound politically correct, but like... You don't have to. People just... <laughs> find it more difficult to want to give us opportunities, mm. you know, because a lot of the time they feel like we don't know what we're doing, right. you know what I mean? So it's been really difficult to try and go the extra mile to really prove that I can do it or to really get like opportunities to even really show that I can do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, but thankfully like things are starting to change, you mm -hmm. know? All right, and then I just as from the perspective of having a system because you I mean you work you are a hustler you got like three different jobs three different things that you've got going on is that conducive in a place like Lagos? It's necessary in a place like Lagos you probably will die if you're not doing multiple things to try and survive um, I think I think the context with Lagos is, is, is about the fact that the system the, I don't know if it's the atmosphere, the air, I don't know if it's the water, it just tells you you have to hustle, you know, it's like um, you, you travel to Abuja for instance and you feel this laid back feel, you know, everybody's chill, Lagos it's, you know, everybody's upbeat and it's not like New York, so don't get it confused, really. don't get it confused at all, it, not, almost nothing works, so you really have to do the extra extra to get the bare minimum, um, traffic is terrible. Um, the roads are fantastic, let's not say <laughs> what it really is. Um, so living in Lagos is, is really survival mode, even though you don't want to live anywhere else. You know, so it's, it's that, bit, that, that bittersweet relationship where there's a lot of opportunities in Lagos because of the fact that it's a, it's a commercial hub of Nigeria mm -hmm. and then it's just a very difficult place to live. So yeah. it's like live or die trying while you're in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds very inviting. Anyone that's outside, it's like, yeah, come to the place, like, live or die. You know? This is where you want to be. And speaking of people that are coming, so you're Nigerian, obviously, mm -hmm. but you school in the U.S. How has that been since you've, you've been here? And So the transition for me is always something that's very interesting because, I mean, living somewhere that's not home, you constantly have the identity battle of like, this is not where I'm from, but I have to like fit in somehow. And then you come back home and it's like, I'm from here, but you don't really fit I still need to try to fit in somehow. So it's just this constant, yeah, constant battle of like identity. I get into like an Uber and this Uber guy's like, so you're not from here, I'm guessing. And I'm just like, bro, what does my name say? Yeah. Like, can y'all just free me? Um, but there's just the constant idea of like, I have to find a way to fit in being yeah. here. Um, but it's Lagos and it's, you know, where I grew up, things might have changed and I might not know how to get from like Surulere to Lekki, but it's fine. Like this, this is where I'm from. So. I mean, I've been here for two years and I still don't know how to get from Surulere to Lekki. Wow. So. I do though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look up. Yeah. <laughs> but why do you why do you guys think that although you know the systems don't work and it can be challenging at times, why do you guys think that people still want to come back? Why do people want to live in Lagos? There's no place like Lagos. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I think that's just kind of like very vague. I think for people who come back, yo, if if I didn't live in Lagos, 
I don't think I would ever like really want to come back because mm. it's actually really hard to have the standard of living, a basic standard mm. of living is very expensive to maintain yeah, here right. in Lagos, you know what I mean? And of course you can't live like a substandard life, you have to yeah. have a generator, you have, mm. to have, you have to have an AC, you have to have yeah. like the basic things, right? Mm. Kind of takes me to my next one, which is, it seems like Lagos especially is like the land of the serial hustlers. Mm. Like, you have to have, I mean, do you need to have multiple things, multiple streams of income in order you to better. be able to survive? <laughs> because, I mean, I'm sure it's not like that in the States. You have your 9 to 5, no. which gives you all of your health benefits, life insurance, yeah. dental. Yeah, and then everything else is like, oh, this is a hobby. So I have the time to, you know, pursue, I don't know, music on the side, or writing. Mm. Um, yeah, no, it's... Oh, my God. It's, yeah, you it's, <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's something that I always wonder about because I think Nigerians are very creative and resourceful people. And I just imagine if we had the time to, instead of hustling, to, like, actually delve deeper in things that we love to do, like, how much better would things be? I, I don't know. I, it's... Like us is stressful, okay? I mean, and I've only been here for like three days. So I why should not complain <laughs> yeah. what I'm basically wow. trying to say. No, we did. I, I know she, she, she does big gigs and I, I'm sure that you should be able to give a better perspective to this because True. I mean, you would think that because you see on TV and <laughs> okay, first one gig is enough for the year. Is it all? Is it all? I mean, is that all you do? Did you see that? Did you, you see that? You know, yeah. Are you yeah, just no, the DJ? Um, I'm not just the DJ actually, but uh -huh. but yeah, the thing about it is like back to the standard of living in Lagos. Mm. If you actually want to afford the kind of life that you want to live, sure. you have to. Mm -hmm. work extra hard mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah not like i have multiple streams of income i'm a dj mostly and mm -hmm. all the other things i do are centered around the music and the lifestyle gotcha. you know what i mean several like projects outside just dj mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah that's how i get extra cash <laughs> so, so basically, but it's, it's not that rosy still yeah <laughs> It's a yeah. struggle. So you see, it's it a is, hustle it for everybody. For everybody. Yeah. I mean, one thing I've noticed here in Lagos is that there's a vast contrast yes. between the rich mm -hmm. and the poor. Yes. Is there a middle class and in they Lagos? they all live together. Yeah. That's they the do. amazing thing. Yeah. They, they all live, live around together. each other. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we're set up like Why do you think that you can live in a beautiful place like Lekki or Ikoi with opulent houses? This is a beautiful place like Lekki. Is Lekki like really beautiful? I mean, I'm yeah. guessing in comparison, to some, in other comparison to some other places, and you have all these, you know, big opulent cars and houses mm. and affluent people, and then as soon as you come out of your compound, you're faced with poverty. Mm. Why do you think we have this? Well, I think they're trying to create that. They're trying to separate that with um, um, Equa Atlantic. So probably if we all move there, we won't see it. So we should just keep moving away from the poverty no, and what not I'm trying, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that. Um, the problem with Lagos is it's trying to develop without thinking about mm. its poor people. Mm. So it's trying to grow into this mm. mega city mm. and it's not realizing and this is this is everywhere in the world. Yeah. It's it's also why you created uh, why you create a social security system mm -hmm. where you know that if the poor continues to be poor, eventually they will eat up the rich. Yeah. Mm. So you want to create a system that keeps them okay. satisfied, yeah. occupied. Or, or gives them uh, uh, shelter, mm -hmm. but in Niger in Lagos, Nigeria, basically, what we realize is that it's, that doesn't exist. Yeah. So we are tra we are developing, you know, creating big bigger houses, bigger cities, driving bigger mm -hmm. cars, making the roads look more beautiful, yeah. and somehow just believing that the poor will just disappear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Eventually, one of these days, it's just going to get to that point where they're going to say no more. And you know the unfortunate thing is, and this is what scares me most of the time, is because if they snap, God forbid, mm -hmm. they're not going to get to the guy in Asorok or, yeah. or the governor. The people that are actually making the decisions. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they really so. look at us as, yeah. as, yeah. as government. You know? Yeah, basically. Mm. Yeah. You know, they look, mm. ah, we die your big car, you know. So mm. when anything happens, they're going to come for us first of all mm. before they think yeah. of any. They Nobody's going to take a guys. flight to Abuja. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> That's really that. true. I and, think and I imagine yeah. explaining to them with your accent that yeah, I'm not one of them. You know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
talking about the turn up life, the <laughs> Naija nightlife. Yeah. How is it? Because I know, you know, yes, Naija has a lot of his problems, but I don't know anybody else that knows how to party quite as hard mm. as Nigerians. <laughs> it's like we yeah. work hard and because, we definitely play hard. Because we, we try to like, because life is so hard. So we mm. try to like, as much as possible, turn up. Like even different spheres of, different types of turn up. There's the people who have their parties that, the older generation they have their O and B type of parties right. that they go to every weekend, mm -hmm. and then there's the younger generation that we go to the clubs or the beach or whatever. But I think at the club, I don't know how to say this, but you can literally meet anybody, and like anything can happen in the club. When I say you can meet anybody, I mean like you can meet from a Senator House of Rep member, mm. someone high up in the government. They are mm. clubs. Uh, it, How do they have money? I, I should be going to clubs. <laughs> <right? laughs> He's like, I might and get some contracts. You know, I'm <laughs> thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. Like, from, from someone high up in the government to mm -hmm. like the last person you would ever expect. Like, mm -hmm. So a club is a place where, and it's so funny because everybody becomes like a level of sort. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, do you get what I mean? So I'm always very careful in the club, like meeting new people because <laughs> I don't even know where you're coming from. There's mm. people who don't have homes, who just go to the club I was gonna to say turn up. They have no way they're going from there. Yeah. You know, they're actually hustling right there in the club. Man. Do you get what I mean? Wow. So, so they don't have crazy. homes, they don't have money, but they're in the club. Yeah. Maybe they'll get that contract. Looking for get, I don't know. <laughs> Looking for opportunities. Plus, they can't. They have nowhere to sleep. So they're in the club. They'll, they'll probably be there till morning. Mm. Probably go home with someone. You know. Oh, so it's like a way to find like a sleeping buddy for the night. So you have like a sleepover. <laughs> and a then sleepover. You, you have a sleepover. Oh, I didn't say that. We just love that. That's it. So like the the nightlife in Lagos is really crazy. And then you see people who don't even have anything, nothing. I mean, nothing at all but have some money, mm. go to the club, spend mm. so much money. Like when I used to work at the club, you see like people owing as much as like four million, five million. Mm. Uh, so the club, like on drinks and food. Like, Wait, you say owing? You? Yes, owing. Yes, you're owing. owing four million, five million. Wait, I'm sorry. And for just... someone to get to the level where they can owe that much, they, must they would have, spent have spent quite a bit. so much. And then so like you don't even have like, you can't even pay your bills. But yeah, in the club, like why? So yeah. one thing I've heard us all talk about right now is kind of like the different opportunities that Lagos has to offer. And yeah. um, since we're going into an election period and we're just going to a period where the youth seem to be rising up, do you think that there's the same opportunity when it comes to the youth and the more, I don't want to call them, the more established, the people that have lived longer? In yeah. politics, you mean? Just in, in everything, whether it's in politics or just even in businesses. Um, there's a lot of people now that they say after they get out of NYSC, they want to get a job. The first question they ask you is, do you have married? experience? Yeah. Are you married? Things like that. Yeah. But what I think in, in terms of business, there are, there are new channels open up for young mm. people, um, especially in the uh, payments, tech payment spaces. Mm -hmm. um, there are... There are people like E um, who are doing fantastic stuff around payments, and uh, E is quite young. It's, 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 so they young people getting into those spaces. But you see the traditional spaces like oil and gas, mm. cement, mm -hmm. uh, um, like uh, agriculture, agriculture. Those places that are traditional, the people who won't let you enter if um, your father isn't somebody's father, yeah. father's friend. You know, or you are just going to be a prodigy for the next maybe 10, 15 years, and then mm -hmm. when the person retires, you take over. Yeah. But um, I'm glad that our young people are not waiting for those opportunities anymore. They are now trying to carve out, you know, new openings for themselves. I mean, look at what some of us are doing with YouTube, mm -hmm. you know. So the technology space is really giving us opportunities, but let's not, we're not waiting for those. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most interesting parts about Lagos is the people. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking all aspects from just mm -hmm. traffic, the, your interactions with people, yeah. things that you're just like, I like, guy. Are you the first? You know, like, okay, okay. Um, so, when it comes to the people here in Lagos, why do you think that we are just so interesting? Special. Special. <laughs> Individuals. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. But I mean, like, Lagos. 
has some of the most like interesting is the word, but like really nice people living with us. Like really nice, really interesting. Like sometimes when, if I'm fixing my car or something and I'm hanging out like with the mechanics and stuff, like just in the yard, mm -hmm. and there are all sorts of characters come come mm. and go. You know, I have I always have such a great time like laughing with yeah, those guys and yeah. stuff. But the thing about it is that the situation in the country mm. just makes them frustrated, annoyed, and just like infuriated. So yeah. the situation makes people. us hard. Yeah, at makes kind of, I agree. Kind of One time I was driving and this guy. Okay, so I was right behind him, but I'm sorry, but I was on my phone, so I I just like didn't calculate. Like I was a bit distracted, so mm -hmm. I just like bumped into him, but not like a bump. Mm -hmm. It was just like, like a tap, like a tap. This guy came out of his car with all the anger in the oh world. My what are you blind? Are you crazy? What kind of thing is this? Like I'm just like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Did something <laughs> else happen? <laughs> Did something else happen that I don't know yeah. about? So I came down and I looked at the car, like nothing even like nothing at all. Like it was literally just a tap. You know? So But I think maybe he I said nothing to him. Mm. And I just got into my mm. car. And I just closed the door and I just cried. Mm. So, I'm even talking to you. Uh, <laughs> I could see you. So he decided to unleash all the stress of the day. Yeah, I know. You know. Or a I month. Like, no. I mean, I mean, there's nothing I could have told him. So I just kept quiet. Lagos is a commercial center where all things happen. Life is more better in Lagos than any other cosmopolitan places. What's special about Lagos is that Lagos is, is such a matured society or Lagos has a mature system whereby if you're hardworking you can make things happen for you. You can make things, you can fulfill your life ambition. Lagos is the number one in the whole, since Nigeria is concerned, Lagos is the number one. It's an industrial city, it's meant for everybody. I'm from, I'm from Pata 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 because of the, 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 the two coming out from the states. I find myself inside Lagos. Do I think people need to have the first job to survive in Lagos? Well, I don't think so. To my own understanding, I think there's, you can have one particular job. If the pay is okay, you can survive in Lagos. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think the bill, yeah, you have to have like different, like three, five jobs to survive in Lagos because the bills in Lagos are so exorbitant. They are like skyrockets. So yeah, I think so. All right. Okay. So with all of our thoughts on Lagos and thinking about how people live, I want you guys to really think about this question. Okay. Is it Lagos for life or life without Lagos? Meaning you're ready to just pack up and go if you had the opportunity. Mm. Lagos for life, life without Lagos. Mm. It's deep. <laughs> I don't think I would ever leave Lagos. Mm. I've never lived anywhere else. Um, I, I mean live. I've never lived anywhere else. I don't think I would live anywhere else. I, I, I've, I'm addicted to Lagos. Mm -hmm. You're yes. addicted to the pain. And I'm not sure. Like and, and like you know, the reward I've, lived, at the I've, same lived, time. I've, I've spent like three, four months in different parts of the country and different parts of the world. And I feel something missing each time. It's like, you know, it's so slow. The pace is so, I'm like, what's going on? You know, the people are too polite. You know, they're moving out of the way. It's, I'm just, I'm just used to the Lagos hustle. I'm, I'm just too used to the hustle. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, I'm in Abuja one time and I'm trying to get coffee um, seven o'clock in the morning. And I couldn't find any place. And I put a tweet out. I'm like, I'm trying to get coffee this morning. Anybody know where I can get? And they're like, ah, those shops don't open till like nine. Mm. In Lagos, there's this place on VI where in VI where the guy opens the shop at 6:45 because he knows I'll be there, you know, and there will be people like me there. Yeah. So it's. I'm not sure. Maybe when I'm 40s, 50s. Mm. Yeah, I can. Move somewhere out. else, but now no. Yeah, but I think well, there, there are two sides to it. For me, when when I'm out of Lagos for a while, myself, I haven't lived for like really long for like years outside mm -hmm. Lagos. No, sorry, I have because I grew up in, in Abuja, maybe outside Nigeria. But um, 
for me, it's, it's two ways to think about it. Because when I travel out of the country for a while, maybe like a month or two, and I get back, and I start to see like the pressure of water, the color of water, like mm. murky, like sometimes um, there's no lights, there's traffic here and there, there's me trying to get somebody to come and do something. Mm. One story or the other is entering. You know, I, I'm just like, uh, I haven't missed Lagos at yeah. all. <laughs> do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, because of like my friends, my family, mm -hmm. the people of Lagos, the really interesting people of Lagos, and then some of the things that I can only get in Lagos, like mm -hmm. the food, the yeah. some things, you it's know, just the life, you know, like going out somewhere and having a beer and drinking mm -hmm. pepper soup, mm -hmm. you know, you can't really have that, you know what I mean? So that makes me feel like, okay, well, Lagos is not that bad, but I, I still have an open mind, to be honest. I mean, yeah. I have a career that I, I think is really thriving in Lagos, so mm -hmm. I'm not ready to leave Nothing that like, yeah. for, for any other promises mm -hmm. outside of God. But, but I have an open mind for me. It's, it's either or. It's, it's maybe Lagos for life. Maybe. Lagos for life. <laughs> okay. But whatever the case is, I would always come to Lagos at least once a year. Okay. You know? I think I'm going to flip the script on this one because, so I'm Igbo. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows the mass exodus that happens in December. Mm. Everybody goes <laughs> home, right? Yeah. So for me, I think my perception of what is home has not been Lagos. What my perception mm. of home is, is my Good. town where I come from. Mm. Um, so, like, Lagos is cool and it has a great culture, um, but I don't know that I claim Lagos as home. Um, mm. So, if I had to choose Lagos for life or life without Lagos, I think I'm okay to say life without Lagos because for me, like, it's just like anywhere that I've lived. Like it's a different place, but it's not necessarily where I consider it to be like home per se. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for being on the show. You've given thank lots you. of great insights about Thanks Lagos. Lagos. If you've never been to Lagos, I think one thing as a consensus that we're all saying is you have to come. You do. Yeah. It is an experience. Yeah. You know, and for our resident Lag Lagosians out there that have been watching, is it Lagos for life or life without Lagos? Let us know. <laughs> Be sure to comment below and join the Indani family. Follow us on all of our social media platforms at Indani TV. And be sure to use the hashtag Indani Will Talk. I'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>